a lesson one five, uh, differentiation rules, shortcuts to take derivatives, tangent lines, uh, how you know if it's differentiable, and rates of change. All right, some shortcuts to taking derivatives instead of using limits. So the POW rule is you take the exponent, multiply it in front, subtract one to the exponent. Um, the derivative of any constant is always zero. Uh, scalar multiple rule, so if you have a number being multiplied in front, you multiply it when you do the exponent. Uh, the sum rule means if you have multiple terms, adding or subtracting, you just take the derivative of each one separately. So using shortcuts, the derivative here is 4x cubed, subtract one to the exponent, negative 2 thirds x. When you subtract one, just go negative 2, take away 3. That's negative 5 thirds. And the derivative of 3 is 0. Here, it'd be helpful to write it. Now I'm going to go 1 half. To write it with a negative exponent rather than a fraction, the derivative of 5 is 0. And then negative times a negative is positive 3 halves. And again, subtract 1 to the exponent. For number 4, again, we're going to write this. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. So I'm going to write it as 5 over 8 and then x to the negative 3. So then the derivative would be negative 3 times 5, which is a negative 15 over 8 and subtract 1 to the exponent. That's just a simple power rule. And sometimes you have to use algebra to write it as an exponent so you can do the power rule. Higher order derivatives. We just did the first derivative. If you take the derivative of a derivative, that's the second. The derivative of that, and you just keep going on and on. Here are the notations that we can use to describe higher order derivatives. Um, the question here is to find the first derivative and evaluate at one. So the first step here is to write it uh, calculus friendly. So that's one half, but the exponent would be two over three, but because it's in the denominator, it's negative two over three. So the first derivative, we're gonna multiply now, when I multiply 1 half times negative 2 thirds, the 2's cross out and leave you with negative 1 third. Uh, when you subtract 1, negative 2, take away 3, that's negative 5 over 3, and there's the derivative. So if I evaluate at 1, the good news about a base of 1 is 1 to any exponent just equals 1. So this is 1 times negative a third. And the next thing is I need to find the second derivative. So I come back here and I take the derivative of the derivative. So the second derivative, a negative times a negative is positive. And then when I multiply them together, it's positive 5 over 9. And again, I'm going to subtract 1. So negative 5 take away 3 is negative 8 over 3. And then I'm going to plug in a negative 8. I'm not even going to simplify it. You could. And there's your answer. Number six. All right, the next topic for the lesson. Uh, the equation of a tangent line, which is the derivative, right? The slope. Uh, can you write the equation of a tangent line? Um, sometimes we want to find the line perpendicular to it. That's called the normal line. Uh, when slopes are perpendicular, that's the opposite and the reciprocal. So we're going to practice that right now. In number six, find an equation of the tangent line for this graph at this point. So I know the x is 1, uh, the y is 6. I need to find the slope. Now, to find the slope of the tangent line, I'm going to take the derivative. So that's 20 x to the fourth. That's negative 6x, and the derivative of 5 is 0, and then I'm going to plug in 1. So I only plug in the x value into here, 
and you're left with 20, take away 6, which is 14. Now, these are the numbers we're going to use to write the equation of the line. So in HK form, it would be Y equals the slope, which is 14, the X value, change the sign, and then the Y value stays the same. Done. For number 7, find an equation of the normal line at the same point. So X and Y stay the same. But the slope, we need to do the perpendicular slope. So I need to do the opposite sign, which is negative, and then the reciprocal, which is 1 over 14. So negative 1 over 14, that slope is perpendicular to positive 14. And then everything else is the same. Sorry, this y value is 6. So it's y equals negative 1 over 14, uh, x minus 1 plus 6. So all that changed was the slope in knowing how to do that. All right, non-differentiability. Where does the derivative not exist? So the derivative does not exist at a discontinuity. A limit exists there, but not the derivative. So if it's not continuous there, the derivative does not exist. So a derivative doesn't exist at a hole or a jump or an asymptote. But also, if it's continuous, a derivative doesn't exist at a sharp turn or if it's a vertical tangent because the derivative of a vertical line is undefined. So these five characteristics destroy differentiability. That's a strong word. So holes, jumps, and vertical asymptotes, any discontinuity, you can't take the derivative. And if it's continuous but has a sharp turn, or a vertical tangent line, also, you can't take the derivative. If a function is not continuous, it is not differentiable. A function may be continuous and still not be differentiable. So you can see that. All right, find the x values where the function is not differentiable. All right, the absolute value for x, this is what the graph looks like. There's a sharp corner uh, at x equals 0. For number 9, if I take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, this again creates at 0. So if I plug 0 into the top, I get 0. But 0 into the bottom, there's nothing to plug into, so the answer is 1. That gives you two different answers. Uh, that again creates like a sharp turn or corner. A cusp. So at zero, the derivative doesn't exist because they don't agree. They have to agree on the same number for it to exist there. Here, the, uh, there's a jump. If I plug zero into the top and zero into the bottom, two different answers. So at um, x equals zero, there's a jump in the graph. And a derivative doesn't exist at the jump. For number 11, where it's not continuous. So at x equals zero, and positive 1. So 0 is a hole and positive 1 is an asymptote. But you can't take the derivative at holes and asymptotes. Uh, the cube root of x right here, which is where the point of inflection is, um, at x equals 0, there's a vertical tangent there. So it creates a, a vertical slope at 0 for that graph. All right, last part of the lesson, uh, rate of change. Another meaning for slope is rate of change. We now have two ways to find slopes. Uh, one is the way you learned in algebra. And sometimes we call this a rock, which is average rate of change. It's y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. This is algebra. And then the second way is the instantaneous rate of change. That's calculus. This involves taking the derivative to find it, and we sometimes say i rock. So for number 13, 
find the average rate of change from 10 to 30. So that's uh, algebra. So that's going to be x2 minus x1. To find the y values, I get a plug in. So it's f at 30 minus f at 10. And I have to plug in to find those values. So 30 cubed, 3 times 3, was it? 2,760. Make sure I did that right. No, there's more zeros. 27,060. If I plug in 10 cubed, that's 1,020. And then divide by 20, I'll do it for you. That gives you 1,302. For number 14, we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change. That's taking the derivative, 3x squared plus 2 and then you find the derivative at that value. So that's 300 plus 2. Done. Is that it? Hey, Mr. G Math over and out. Thank you for watching the lesson, watching it a second time, and now we'll do our assignment together. Till next time.